this video. I'll play some of it. Um, basically, it was a, uh, I think it was actually like a News 9 person has a dash camera and they uh, caught this like on on the highway. But anyway, the Highway Patrol just released some brand new video this afternoon of a wild road rage crash in Edmond. You saw first here on News 9. Storm Jones has been following this from the start, and you've been looking at this video this afternoon. Well, Amanda, the Sunday before last, this road rage caught on camera by a News 9 employee, but their camera was not the only one rolling. Now we're seeing the ordeal from the viewpoint of the trooper who at first declined to take the driver into custody. I'm not going to say that I wasn't playing stupid. Okay. I'm not going to sit here and lie. I got being a dumb how pissed off hey, it happens. It happens. It was a back and forth type thing. Okay. This is a thing he's old. I'm an idiot. Stephen Cochran's four year old child in the back seat. Will he get cited? Mm -hmm. Yeah. He is. Mm -hmm. What about um, having a kid in the car? See, that's kind of where it gets weird. So, this is kind of where I'm going to cut him a break, okay? Because obviously he's dead. I don't want to mess his whole life up. You know what I'm saying? Sure. Child endangerment's a felony. Felony means you go to jail. So, sure. we're not going to do that. Trooper Chandler Leip tells Cochran he's issuing a ticket for improper lane change, a $249 fine. Cutting you a break a little bit, all right? Okay. Since there is a kid in the car, there's a road rage thing going on. It's borderline child endangerment, okay? It's a felony deal. I ain't taking you to jail. I ain't ruining your life like borderline that. Borderline child endangerment. Cochran. So, uh, anyway, they, they cited and released this guy. He had a four-year-old in the car. As the dude, like, and the longer video shows, I mean, it, this went on for, like, minutes. Like, he weaved around a bunch of traffic, you know, endangered probably countless other people just doing that, and then ran this car into the median. You know, like, my initial take was sort of like, it really shows the uh, extreme amount of discretion that law enforcement has. But it's like, and, and then, of course, the obvious reaction to many people is, you gotta wonder how this would have gone down had the uh, person been of color and not a white dude. Um, but also just like, it's just so discordant because it's like, you know, we talk about, oh, we got to prosecute violent crime and all this stuff. And it's just sort of like, I mean, what was that? I mean, anyway, just... Really wild all around um, the uh, questionable uh, nature of the discretion and, of course, how this gets applied discriminatorily. Uh, and, and, you know, I'm caught somewhere, like, if I'm being really honest, like, I'm caught somewhere be between, like, maybe we should be using this discretion, like, more liberally. I mean, not maybe if for people who run folks off the road. That's pretty... Uh, insane and extreme but like you know if there is no harm done like maybe i mean it's, it's crazy i mean like I, it's crazy what they take people to jail for and then this dude they were just like ah you're a dad get get out of here well yeah and at every point of the legal system uh racism and classism plays huge roles so yeah, I mean, if that was a black kid who refused to give the cop his name or gave the cop the wrong name, he would be arrested and charged with obstruction. Um, I see that, and that happens in the state. So that level of discretion, I mean, it's like everything else in this society. Like, yeah, like, um, you may give an officer discretion, and in their mind, they may not be even wielding it in that way, but races and racism, which I should probably study critical race theory, it affects how that discretion is wielded, right? But here, I this is kind of left field. What came to my mind was, especially in the state of Oklahoma, what if he had a gun? Yeah, that's the first thing that came to my mind because I like I I have road rage. I don't I I, I just curse um very loudly, you know. But I, I don't run anybody off the road. I don't brandish weapons or anything like that. But that's the first thing that came to my mind is, and you know we've had that conversation. If me and you are talking about your fence hanging over, I mean your tree hanging over my fence. And I'm like mad at you about it as your neighbor. That's a conversation. If I'm talking about that very same tree hanging on that very same fence line with an AR-16, then that's a whole different conversation, right? So the thing that came to my mind is like he used his truck as a weapon. But the thing that came to my mind is like, what if he had a fucking gun and he felt the way he felt? And in Oklahoma, he, he very well probably I don't know this guy's background, obviously anything about him, but he very well could have had a gun and that could have changed the whole conversation. 
And that's what you think about. Like all of us fucking get angry on the road. Like this is how that happens, but it's a completely different conversation when you brandish the guns and this sort of thing. But that's what, I, for some reason, I don't know. Uh, like that's what came to my mind. But yeah, I mean, as far as like the practical nature of it, that discretion is wielded in a very racist way. And, and that permeates our entire criminal legal system. Who gets arrested and why? A huge determining factor, just being honest with you, a teenager spraying graffiti or doing some like minor crime on the east side is treated a lot differently than that same t- than a teenager doing that same act in Nichols Hills. It's just how the, yep. the cookie crumbles, right? And that discretion is wielded in such a way. So Yeah, and, and that's where I kind of get so the last thing I just wanted to touch on was this uh, criminal justice advisory council, CJAC. You know, they're they're starting this phase now of their endless meetings talking about um I mean kind of two things. They mention high utilizers, which is funny because like high high utilizers means like people that get the system called on them a lot. So a lot of times like homeless people or mentally ill people, like people who are just frequently find themselves in situations where folks are calling the police on them. And like they know that they have um high utilizers. I mean, they, they know who these people are. Like, that's how well studied this is at this point. And it's like, instead of getting them help, getting them resources, getting them what they need to not be constantly having the cops called on them, they, they like end up taking them to jail a bunch and like, or end up like doing this rigmarole that makes no sense. So it's like, you know, again, it goes back to like the discretion question. It's like, you know, on this other side, like the people that you're having the most trouble with. And instead of like, building systems to help them you're just like constantly like hands in the air don't know what to do but some white dude can r- literally almost kill someone and you're like well he's dad like you know i'm gonna write you a ticket and you get out of here so it's like it, it's just like that kind of thing makes me a little nuts but then the other thing is on the discretion front is you know instead of having endless meetings with consultants and architects and developers and whoever else to build a bigger batter jail it's like why don't we just use our discretion this much better and stop fucking locking people up to begin with like there are so many people staying in that county jail right now because they can't pay cash bail you know that we know that the da knows that every fucking person involved in this process knows that just stop locking them up like get with the judge get with the da get with the people that have the discretion to decide this shit and just stop it just quit doing it. Call it a pilot program. Do it for six months. Don't lock up a single person that doesn't absolutely unequivocally need to be locked up, if, especially for bail, for six months and see what the fuck happens. And like my guess is many of your problems would go away because you're just locking up a bunch of people you don't need to lock up. And, and they could do that. They could do that like tomorrow. They don't have to like do a project plan. They don't have to raise millions of dollars to build a building. They don't have to do shit. Just use their discretion that much better. Anyway, so that's the point. first thing about like the high utilizers of and and that's a horrible way of putting people we put in a cage a lot. Um, high utilizer. Who in the fuck wants to utilize jail? Um, but so that, that's the first thing. But it's the equivalent of saying, okay, you see that group of people over there? Yeah, I see them. They're hungry. Okay, how can I help them? Well, you just go. You you go feed them. Right. So you have these group of people that are, quote unquote, high utilizers. You can identify this group. Why would you not spend some amount of resources to go get that group of people before they even entered the jail or utilized the jail? That alone fixes a lot of your problems because the the source of the issues with the jail is overcrowding. So if you have these uh, if you you think about these high utilizers, right, high utilizers, they are people who are churned in and out. Like, you can't be a high utilizer if you're there for 13 months, then you sent you to ODOT. You was there for 13 months, and then you left. But if you're there 13 times in 13 months, you're a high utilizer. You're going in and going out. So let's just find a way to never have you go in. And we know who you are. And if we, if you never go in, then that substantially reduces our population, reduces our overcrowding, reduces many of our problems. This shit ain't hard. Um, But it's just, you know, it's just a mind state. Like, you know, it's a story about... And I'm not a religious person, but there's a story about the difference between heaven and hell. It's like the guy was it's a, a person in heaven speaking with a person from hell. And it's like it's interesting in hell because we have this long table 
and we have this beautiful feast for all of us. It's a beautiful layout and feast, but we can't eat it. So well, why can't you eat it? He was like, well, do you have really long uh, forks and spoons? I'm sorry, spoons and forks, and we can't eat out of it. So we just sit there and look at the food. It's torture. And the, the person from heaven says, you know, we actually have the same thing. We have the super long table, we have the super long, we laid out feast, and we have super long uh, spoons and super long forks. So well, what do you do? We just feed each other. So it's like, this is a perspective of like, we all agree overcrowding and people dying in a county jail um, once a month is bad, but we can't get to the feed each other of it. Well, just the people you talk about that are high utilizers find a way that they never fucking utilize it. Versus like, what well, a high utilizers, how can we do fix this? How can we make it when they get here? It ain't as bad as opposed to like, well, let's make it where they never get here. And and like the annoying thing to me, like from a discussion of like all these asshats getting in a room and just jerking each other off endlessly about it is, is like, you know, it goes to the defund the police argument. You know, the police could look at their budget and say, you know what, maybe next year, you know, we just freeze five positions, don't hire five, you know, officers that are just constantly harassing homeless people. Maybe we spend yeah, or go, uh, go, uh, responding to endless Walmart calls because they won't like put a lock on their you know leaf blowers or whatever, and and you know just uh, like spend that money literally just helping these people. Like we're gonna we're gonna put we're gonna find a bunch of nonprofits. We're gonna hire a coordinator. We're gonna like you know like just solve the problem you have. You you have identified the problem. Congratulations. Like you have done it. Now just you the the you have a two hundred million dollar budget. I mean you could take. 250,000 of that and probably knock out a significant percentage of these people and put them into a objectively better situation for every single person involved. And you don't because I don't know. You're just, I mean, it's, it's perspective, it's, right? Again, the feeding crazy. each other. It's a, and I've learned that it's like, you just, especially like dealing with like DAs and stuff. It's like, we just fundamentally see the world differently. Like I, I just have to accept it. Like I just fundamentally don't believe in, in how you believe. Like I just believe in feeding each other and you don't. Yeah, I mean, and that, that's that's the truth of it. But it's just amazing to me, though, when it's a white dude driving his truck into another person, suddenly, you know, you're just having a bad day. You were just, you were just mad. Like, we all get mad. It's like, it's amazing that they can see it crystal clear when it's that situation. But when it's all these other ones, it's like, man, we just don't know how to help. We're just and, yeah. clueless. And that... And that comes down to the basic seeing of humanity in people. You know, I said last week, like an animated principle of, of, of progressive is like we just see, appreciate, value people's humanity. So like this shit is not difficult. That's like the the underlying principle for what we how what we believe is that we just value people's humanity. We see people's humanity and we see everyone's everyone. humanity. What you, what you see, everyone. What you're seeing is like they don't see everyone's humanity. That individual, he, he got mad. Right. I get mad driving, you get mad driving, whoever is watching this, if you drive, you've gotten mad driving. That's human, right? That's human nature. They gave him that grace to say, listen, man, you just got angry. You was fucking up and you're probably going to pay out the ass on insurance, bro, but you just got angry. Everybody gets angry. You know you're digging up. You know you're fucking up. We understand. You got angry. That's human nature. We all get angry. They gave him that humanity. These high utilizers, these individuals that die in the county jail, these people that, that police regularly shoot, right and murder and beat and maim they don't see the humanity so they don't get the grace of like uh, i mean how many times you then do you think if that was a black dude who ran his truck into somebody he hopped out with a bat they was like well hold on we understand you get angry yeah oh well they, yeah. well they put 19 bullets in him before like right before he got the door really cracked open they don't see the humanity in certain people and and, that, and that's the issue like that's that is the gist of our a disagreement like we spoke about um we spoke about covid earlier the anti-vaxxers and anti-maskers they don't see the humanity in, in other people so they don't feel like they should be mildly inconvenient right to have to do something to keep other humans alive right um let's talk about the migrants and how they're going to flip-flop on that and well it's about seeing the humanity in the migrants right like these individuals who deserve our empathy because they're human for no other reason right and we talk about the quote white uh white replacement theory like the gist of that is white men like the guy who got mad they get 
empathy. We should see their humanity. We should understand that they are scared of the changing America and all of that, right? And, but we shouldn't see the humanity in other people. We shouldn't see the humanity in those quote unquote high utilizers. We shouldn't see the humanity in people dying in those jails. That's, that's the gist of our argument.